go. Hello everyone. I'm Enrico L. DiGiamarino Jr. I'm your instructor for BU 204, the macroeconomics course. Please call me Sam. Everyone does. Now, I'm sure by now you've probably heard how hard the economics course is. And I have to admit, it can be a difficult course if a student doesn't do the work that's expected and do it on a regular basis. But it can actually be fairly easy if you read the announcements that I post, because I put important information in those announcements each week. Uh, if you read the assignments in a timely manner, okay, if you do attend the seminars, that's extremely important. I cover a lot of very important information in the seminars that will help you get a really good grade in this course. Okay? And if you do the work uh, when it's due, during the week that it's due. Now I know that we all encounter problems, okay? uh, situations that cause us to have to delay certain things. But remember, you're in college here to not just to get a grade, but to learn the material. Okay? So it's important that you do the work in a timely fashion. So, enough preaching. Okay? Uh, I do want to mention the midterm assignment and the final assignment. The midterm assignment's in Unit 4, and the final assignment is in Unit 9. Okay? Both of those are fairly intensive. They each have uh, six questions apiece, and each question has several parts. So, and it counts for a significant part of your grade. So, I would, what I would suggest is that you download those two assignments at the very beginning during the first week of the course. That way you can be looking at the material and uh, at the questions and as you read the material you can pick up on what's being asked and then you can uh, you know, be able to be in a much better position to get a better grade. So that's important that you go ahead and download those at the beginning. They'll be in doc sharing. They're also in the individual units. Now, what other kinds of work do you have? Well, each week there is a discussion thread in units one, two, and three. There's no discussion in unit four. That's to give you more time to complete the midterm. Okay? There'll be discussions in units five, six, seven, and eight. Again, no discussion in Unit 9 because of the uh, final assignment being due then. And your Unit 10 discussion is the, uh, uh, the reflection discussion, and it's an ungraded assignment. Okay? There are written assignments in Units 1, 2, and 3. They each have a single question, and each one will have, uh, and they have a couple parts to it, but they're just a single question. Uh, in Unit 4, then you have the midterm. Then Units 5, 6, 7, and 8, you ha again have uh, assignments that have a single question with multiple parts. And then in Unit 9, you have uh, the final assignment. Uh, and the midterm assignment in Unit 4 covers Units 1, 2, 3, and 4. The final assignment covers Units 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay? In Unit 10, you do have a writing assignment. Uh, it's a review and reflection assignment, and uh, you know, so it is a graded assignment also. Okay, so that's the sequence of events of things you have. Of course, we have a seminar in units one through nine, okay, and uh, so in, again, in those seminars, I do cover some very important information. Uh, I try to make sure that I cover things that you're going to have to answer in the various assignments. Okay, now. One of the things I'm going to strongly suggest is that you make an appointment with yourself to do the studying. If you don't have a set time when you do the studying, you'll find it difficult to get everything in. Okay? So make an appointment with yourself. Okay? Now I should ask, why are you here? Why are you even taking the economics course? Don't tell me it's because it's a required course, and don't tell me it's to get a good grade. Okay? I know those are the cases. But I would suspect that each and every one of you are taking business courses and taking college courses because someday you want to be a decision maker in business. Okay? And if that is the case, then you're going to find that this particular course will be of more help to you in understanding what happens in business than just about any other course. 
So it is well worth your time to do the studying and learn the material. Now, like any other specialty area, language is important. And in economics, we have a language of our own. So I could sit here and I could tell you that you were going to discuss MPC and M1 and M2, and that's not going to mean anything to you. It's gobbledygook. Even if I were to tell you that MPC is marginal propensity to consume, and M1 and M2 are two levels of measuring the money supply in the economy, still it's not going to mean a whole lot to you. Okay? However, if I tell you that uh, MPC really means how much of the next dollar that you receive are you going to spend on something new versus how much of that dollar you're going to spend on, on either saving or paying off bills. Okay? Now that concept means something to you. Okay? Well, the idea is at the end of this course, if I mention marginal propensity to consume, or MPC, you're going to immediately click to that image of what it means of that additional dollar that you receive and how much you're going to spend on new things versus how much you're going to save or, uh, or use to pay off bills. Okay? Most of the concepts in economics are going to be similar to that, where we're going to be dealing with some technical term. Uh, that's why language is very specific to each specialty, and economics is no different. Okay? So, during the course of this uh, term, you will learn the language of economics, if you will. Okay? So, uh, but when we talk about economics being important to you as, as a future business decision maker, what we're really talking about is that the very topics that we will cover in this course are topics that you're going to hear about in the news virtually every week and that as business leaders you need to be aware of in order to make proper business decisions. Now I know the marketing instructor is going to tell you though marketing is the most important thing in business. And by the way, I have taught marketing here at Kaplan. Uh, the accounting instructor is going to tell you the same thing. Oh, you've got to know how to measure the, you know, the numbers in accounting. And the management people are going to tell you the same thing. I've taught introduction to management here, so I know that. Okay? Uh, and each one is right in their own special area. However, if you don't understand what's going on throughout the entire economy and how it's going to affect the business that you're responsible for, you're going to find business decisions much more difficult to make. Okay. With that said, uh, like I said, much of what we're going to talk about is going to be things that relate to what's going on in the world. And uh, you'll, uh, as a matter of fact, in the welcome email that I've sent you and the welcome announcement, there is a link to uh, President Obama's uh, recent speech, his uh, State of the Union speech, and virtually everything that he mentions in that speech directly relates to economics and specifically to macroeconomics. Okay, with that said, uh, I should mention that our textbook is uh, written by Paul Krugman and Robin Wells. It's Macroeconomics Second Edition. Okay, now it is in the uh, doc sharing area as e-books to each chapter to be downloaded. So you have access to that there. Some people tell me that they'd like to uh, have a physical textbook. Uh, Kaplan does not make that available to you. Although you're welcome to go online and you can uh, quite likely find a used version of this textbook. Uh, this book was written in uh, 2009, so already it's a year and a half old, almost two years, well it is over two years old now. Uh, so there may be good deals on used ones if you do want a physical textbook in your hands. Uh, there are several learning tools that have been incorporated into this course. For example, in Unit 3, there are a series of videos that have been put together to help you understand supply and demand. Uh, in Unit 4, there's another video that will help you understand uh, what a circular flow diagram is and how we do national income accounting. Uh, in uh, several of the uh, units, uh, specifically in Unit 3, uh, there's a, uh, a set of uh, graphs that 
will let you roll over a particular, roll your cursor over a particular portion of the graph and a pop-up window will explain what that portion means and what its definition is. So that can be quite helpful to you. Uh, there are what we call word clouds in virtually all the units. Uh, you roll your cursor over a particular word and it gives you the definition of that word. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, language is very important in this course, so uh, that again is a tool that will help you. In doc sharing, you're going to find that there's a number of PowerPoints and uh, a PowerPoint presentations uh, that can be of assistance to you. There's a very good set of review uh, PowerPoints uh, for the uh, final uh, assignment in Unit 9. Uh, there are uh, sample graphs in uh, in doc sharing so you won't have to create your own graphs you're going to find at most of the assignments that there'll be a blank graph uh, for each problem and uh, the ones that require graphs and that you can insert lines and, and arrows and things that you'll learn about a little bit later to help clarify your explanation of your answer to the problem uh, and there are tools in doc sharing that will help you with that Okay, again I mentioned that the announcements are extremely important. They may be boring to read, but please read them. Okay? Often I put very important hints in those announcements uh, that will help you get a really good grade or, or uh, you know, save you a lot of, uh, uh, shall we say, sweat and pain in trying to answer a particular question. Okay? Now, the uh, discussion threads uh, you'll notice that the questions that we have in most of the discussion threads are oriented to helping you understand the topic and hopefully to reflect on what some of the uh, things that are going on in our entire economy and how they might affect you and, and people in general. Uh, for instance, our Unit 1 discussion thread is on legalizing marijuana. Our Unit 2 is on alternative energy and how they affect the economy. Uh, so, so we've got some contemporary questions, if you will. Okay? Now, a couple things I really need to have you do. When you submit an assignment, you must use the file name as specified in the directions for the assignment. Your file name, how you name that file on your computer before you upload it to the Dropbox, it must have the course number, AB204, it must have the section number, and remember I teach several different sections of this course. Uh, at any one time there may be four or five different sections of this course running. If you look at the course where you sign into your, uh, your My Desk page or your home page uh, and you go to click into this particular course, it'll say AB204- and it'll give you two numbers. Those two numbers are the section number. So I need that in the file name, then I need your last name, and then I need your first name. Okay? That way I'm for sure not to mix up your assignment with somebody else's, and for sure keep it in the right file system. Also, when you send me emails, please, in the subject line, make sure you put the, the course number, AB204 for this course, and the section number. Okay. That's very important to me to be able to find where I have your information at when you send me an email. Okay, so with that said, uh, how do you contact me? Well, I already mentioned email. You'll find my contact information in the course syllabus. Uh, it'll also, uh, there should be listed there the email address. Uh, my email is uh, edjamarino at kaplan.edu. Uh, you can reach me during my office hours, and I try to maintain office hours on Wednesdays from 6.30 in the evening till 8.30. Uh, that's prior to my Wednesday evening seminar that I do teach. And uh, my AIM number is Sam J. Okay, So uh, you can get me there, and uh, anytime I'm signed on, and I would suggest that you list me as one of your buddies. Okay? That way you'll know when I am signed on. Uh, I also uh, do office hours in the virtual world of Second Life, and there I'm on Sam DG Georgia is my name. 
so you should be able to find me there too and all this information is listed uh, either in the uh, syllabus and in the uh, signature block on the bottom of the uh, uh, email that I sent you the welcome email and then finally you are free to call me on the telephone now my telephone number is listed in the syllabus uh, and in the uh, uh, signature block on the, t on the uh, email that I sent you so please feel free to pick up the phone and call me if you have a question regarding this course. Now, uh, I can help you with the homework to understand the assignments better, any questions you have relating to this course. Now, I would ask you, assignments are due on Tuesday evening at midnight. Please don't call me Tuesday evening at 11 o'clock in the evening and trying to figure out how to solve the particular homework problem. Okay? It's a little late to do that. I strongly suggest that you start working on all of the work earlier in the week okay? so that you're not trying to do it at the last minute. Now I do have the ability to give you a, a website link and uh, so you can call me, I'll give you the website link, you can go to that website and you'll be able to see my computer screen while we're talking okay? and uh, that way I can show you particular things that you need to be aware of in answering a particular problem and we can be talking about it and you'll be able to see what it is that I'm talking about. So uh, now one other thing about how much time should this course take. I don't know if you're aware of this or not but when you take a college course it is expected that you will spend three hours studying for every hour of credit that that course is worth each week. So this is a five credit course. We would expect that you're going to spend 15 hours a week studying to get a really good grade in this course. Okay? Now some folks are able to do it in less, that's an average. Okay? But I'd say that if you're spending less than 10 to 15 hours a week, you're probably not getting your money's worth out of this ed uh, course. Okay? And that's going to be true for virtually every course you take at Kaplan or at any other university you would attend. And if you don't invest at least three hours a week per credit hour, then you're basically wasting not only your time, but your money also. Okay, in order to help you organize a study schedule, I have put a sample study schedule in doc sharing for you. So. With that said, um, again, my purpose is not to scare you off, but to let you know that this is really not that hard of a course. If you do the work and if you come to me, I'll do everything I can to help you. And uh, with that, thank you very much. And we will see each other in the discussion threads and in the uh, seminars and in the other course material. Thank you.